My name is Dr. Ika Flock. I'm the co-director of emergency ultrasound at the University of Florida. Today we're going to be looking at how to estimate left ventricular systolic function. We have to obtain two views to perform this adequate ventricular long axis view as well as the left ventricular short axis view. We'll start with the left ventricular long axis. Transducer indicator is pointed towards the right shoulder in the fourth or fifth intercostal space. We know that we're at the right level when we can see the left ventricular cavity as well as the mitral valve and aortic valve all at the same time. There are four components that we will evaluate to determine left ventricular systolic function. The first and easiest thing to look at is to look at mitral valve opening. We want to ensure that the mitral valve opens fast and wide as it does in this case. Every time there's mitral valve opening, it comes all the way against the septum, almost touching it. We can quantify this easily using M mode, showing the two peaks of mitral valve motion. The first peak corresponds to the E wave, or passive filling from left ventricular relaxation, and the second peak is the A wave from atrial kick. The E point septal separation should be 0.8 to 1 centimeters, and above that is indicative of left ventricular dysfunction. This E point septal separation is normal, as we indicated. The next thing we will look at is fractional shortening. At this point, we take a look at left ventricular uh, diameter and we ensure that there's fractional shortening of 40 to 50 percent, which indicates normal ejection fraction. This can again be quantified in M mode, but a visual estimation often suffices for the experienced sonographer. After assessing fractional shortening, we go on to assess left ventricular wall thickening. We want to again ensure that both the septal as well as the posterior wall thicken 40 to 50 percent with contractions as they do in this case. During systole, there's 40 to 50 percent thickening of the muscles. Again, this can be quantified in that mode. We can supplement the left ventricular long axis view with a short axis view. To obtain this, we will turn the transducer indicator 90 degrees in a clockwise fashion with the indicator pointing towards the left shoulder now. We're at the level of the papillary muscles, just below the mitral valve. Here's a papillary muscle, and here's a papillary muscle. At this point, we can again observe fractional shortening, as well as concentric left ventricular wall thickening. The final component of left ventricular systolic function is to assess left ventricular diameter. Typically, a left ventricular diameter of 6 centimeters or greater is associated with reduced ejection fraction. We freeze the long axis view. We scroll forward until right after mitral valve closing, which, which represents end diastole, and then bring up a measurement point and measure left ventricular diameter right below the mitral valve level, which in this case measures 4.5 centimeters, indicating normal left ventricular diameter.